there is no east or west, when peace like a river, and the last song, um, peace is flowing like a river. And I just thought I might share those, uh, some of those words, peace is flowing like a river. Peace is flowing like a river, flowing out through you and me, spreading out into the desert, setting all the captives free. Let it flow through me, let it flow f through me. Let, my, let the mighty peace of God flow out through me. <clears throat> my theme this morning is on this peace that God uh, <clears throat> gives to us. Some of the... Um, some of my resources this morning comes from a, a book from Dorothy Yerder Nice called Jesus' Clear Call to Justice. <clears throat> so peace joins unselfish love as the, rare, as the world's rarest jewel. Let me say that again. Peace joins unselfish love as the world's rarest jewels. Peace is not just the absence of conflict. It's the presence of God's approval of how I'm relating to him through Jesus and how I'm relating to others. It stems, it stems from receiving by trust and in God's forgiveness. Romans um, 5 verse 1 says, Since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So peace rests on the heartfelt sense that my life is now God's, in, now God's life and that as a lasting unearned gift from God, it is worthwhile and always will be worthwhile. The New Testament understanding of peace comes out of the Old Testament's use of the word shalom. The Hebrew concept sees peace as encompassing well-being for all people, for land and all created life. God blesses all. God wishes wholeness for all. So the, there's a couple... Uh, uses of peace um, that I want to bring to us today. Um, there's a personal peace with God, which comes when we have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ as our Savior. And then there is the peace of God, which is available on a daily basis as the believer participates in the Christian way of life, according to the plan of God. Well, the biblical concept of peace has its roots um, in the meaning of totality or completeness, as I said in that word shalom. We often hear from people who come to know Jesus that their life wasn't complete before. But with Jesus, they are made whole again. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, Jesus is called, among other names, the Prince of Peace the Messiah, the one who came to radically change the world. Jesus came and offered his peace to anyone who believes in him. Zechariah, the priest and father of John the Baptist, sang about the coming of the day that would guide our feet into the way of peace in Luke 1. People expected the Messiah to bless God's chosen ones with earthly peace, meaning safety and salvation. The way of peace or forgiveness and reconciliation with God would extend God's presence. An example of this peace of salvation comes in Luke 8 when Jesus is heading to Jairus' house to heal his daughter when a woman who has been subjected to bleeding for 12 years touched the hem of his garments. Jesus said, who touched me? The woman told Jesus the whole truth. And he replied, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. And in 
verses in chapter 18, verse 42, he told the blind beggar, that one grateful man relieved of leprosy. He said, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Because of faith, people were forgiven, made whole. Were given shalom. After Jesus' resurrection, he visited with his disciples with the doors locked and fearful, and, and a, a fearful group of disciples, fearful of the Jews um, for retaliation of their uh, walking with Jesus, Jesus appears to them and says, peace be with you. And in John 20, he's, in verse 21, Jesus says again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit in them. And in John 14, again, Jesus was talking about the comforter that would be sent to them. In verse 27, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Jesus was clear here in his statement of peace. He was going to leave them, but the Holy Spirit would come and bring peace to them. And they, in return, would take that peace, the peace of Christ, and share it among the world. We can see God's peace as a way of life as we look at how Jesus related to an outcast of a group of people. The Samaritans were a group of people thought unclean by the Jews. This group was formed when the northern kingdom of Israel was captured by the Assyrian army. The Jews were displaced and driven away. Some, however, remained. And as immigrants moved into the area, the Jewish people who were left married the immigrants entering that land. The southern kingdom, Judea, Judah saw these people as impure. And this created conflict between these two groups. The Samaritans weren't, wel weren't welcomed in the temple and had their own place of worship created. Jesus, however, saw these people differently. We can see this conflict in Luke, play out in Luke 9 verses 51 and 56, through 56, where Jesus and his disciples were heading back to Jerusalem, and he sent his disciples ahead of him to ask for food and lodging in this Samaritan village. Their response was unkind. Um, it was not welcome of Jesus. They were not welcome of Jesus and his disciples. And the disciples, being upset, asked Jesus if like Elijah, they could call down fire from heaven and destroy that place. Jesus, however, rebuked them. A man of compassion could not condone such violence. In this way, saying to his disciples that they must tolerate and learn to live with differences instead of violently opposing those who were at conflict, who they were at conflict with. You also remember Jesus' teaching in Luke 10, verse 25 to 37. Jesus approached by a lawyer, asked the question to Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied that he must love, that you must love your Lord, the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul and mind, and then also love your neighbor as yourself. Hearing this, the lawyer couldn't wait to ask Jesus who his neighbor was. And Jesus proceeded to tell him the story of a man beaten nearly to death on his way to Jericho. The priest and the Levite walk on by, but the Samaritan went out of his way to help this man, even offering to financially care for him after he returned. Jesus said, this is your neighbor. Neighbor. I must have been a shock, a member of a despised people as my neighbor. 
Jesus says, uh, a peacemaker, as a peacemaker, was calling for a new depth of understanding of what it meant to believe in God. You also have heard Jesus' teaching on the Mount of Olives in Matthew chapter 5. In the Beatitudes, Jesus is describing a way of life. He's describing what our heart should look like. In Adam's Clark commentary, he he describes verse 9 as this. He says, blessed are the peacemakers this way. A peacemaker is a man who's being endowed with a general a generous public spirit labors, labors for the public good and feels his own interest promoted in promoting that of others. Therefore, instead of fanning the fire of strife, he uses his influence and wisdom to reconcile the contending parties, adjusting their differences and restore them to the state of unity. As all men are rep- represented to be in a state of hostility to God and each other, the gospel is called the gospel of peace because it tends to reconcile men to God and to each other. Jesus was radically different. The Jews expected the coming Messiah to bring, the, to bring Jewish victory over an enemy or nation and nation but victory that fails to give advantage to everyone involves, involved is only partial. The desire to dominate, which is the essence of sin, fails to understand God's radically different kingdom. That was from um, the book I referenced earlier. The God of hope who brought love into this world as a prayer here this morning. The God of hope who brought love into this world. Be the love that dwells between us. The God of hope who brought peace into this world. Be the peace that dwells between us. The God of hope who brought joy into this world. Be the joy that dwells between us. God of hope, the rock we stand upon. Give us peace. Bring us peace. Amen.